So this week we have shipped three of our children off to church camp and we are going to kick it in high gear and see how much we can get done on their rooms while they're away. So our goal is maybe they can come back to a some semblance of a house for what it's worth. We're not quite as talented as Extreme Makeover, <laughs> but maybe we can surprise them a little bit. <laughs> so let's get busy. Okay, we're working on the house. Drywalling today, trying to get the kids some privacy. Danielle wanted me to explain my button here. It was Father's Day, and my daughter gave me this button that says, I'm the boss. And she said, but tomorrow, you have to give it back to mom. So we typically use drywall screws, but in the Fox block, it's a little difficult because it has to go through the drywall, then through the foam back to the studs. So you have to use super long drywall screws. And the other thing about screws is sometimes that plastic in there does not allow it to dimple well into the drywall because it kind of pulls the plastic out. Nails seem to work much better. And if you've got a nail gun that you can dial way, way down, um, then it'll sink them just about the right depth into that drywall. And it's a lot faster with a nail gun too, so speed is great. So we're using drywall in some areas and not others, and it might be confusing, but essentially most of these walls are going to be covered with wood. But right now, we've still got more milling and more drying to do, and the kids need some privacy. So we put up some drywall just for some privacy and soundproofing on some walls, and the wood will go over that. And on other walls, like that fox block wall over there, we don't need to put anything on that. The wood can go directly onto the fox block. But for example, the wall behind me, we're gonna put a big mural up and then wood below it. So most of this drywall is privacy and soundproofing. And then later on, a lot of it's gonna be covered with wood. So we're trying to uh, isolate sound from one room to the next and the way sound travels is it goes through the gypsum into the board and through that gypsum and out so if you can interrupt that barrier uh, make sound go through different mediums then it'll it'll deaden it and uh, so this is a carpet foam roll about six foot carpet foam roll and we're just cutting it into one and a half inch strips putting it on the studs and it will slightly offset this drywall from the studs and break up that sound, break up vibrations. My son has a drum set next to this room, so we'll see how it works. So the next step in our soundproofing quest is to use a specialty product called green glue. You apply it to the seams of your drywall and it stops the sound waves basically from traveling through those seams. It seals it up, so it's a soundproofing substance uh, I'm just kind of using as a backup but of all the research we did of soundproofing techniques uh, using this carpet padding and green glue really seems to be the most um, cost effective cost effective yeah so in fact you can even save money by not buying a glue gun <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to put the right size I, yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> we have the small, it does, this doesn't fit in the, in the regular, the small one. So this is a block of wood and you just push real hard. <laughs> That's well, why he's doing it. Works. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how all this works, but we, we did some noise tests last night talking through the drywall and uh, we'll compare later when it's all up. So we'll see how that goes. I think I saved $3 on that caulk gun. Yeah, at least. It's it's from my lumber mill. Right? Hey, every penny counts. That's right. <laughs> buy me a glass of tea one day. <laughs> well, that, that's like two or three glasses of tea. That's true, using my uh, rewards. Yeah. Well, a heat wave gripped the U.S. this week, and we were right 
in the dead center of it. So our priority became getting power so that we could get this little air conditioner working. And oh, it's nice. Here we are at the power center and I had to run through some checks and some setup with the charge controller to make sure it's matched to my battery bank. They have to uh, match up so that they uh, power it correctly, charge it correctly, don't overcharge it. And so we did that and everything seems to be working great there. Next step was we wanted to check the inverter. We had not turned the inverter on yet. So in order to do that, you actually have to have a load that it goes through. So we wired up circuit number one in the house. It's a small circuit, 15 amp circuit. And we ran that circuit out there, got all the outlets checked and installed. And then we powered up the inverter and plugged something in. They set a minimum of five watts. <laughs> so I had to find something that was five watts. And it went through its checks and I did volt checks throughout the inside of the panel with the cover off, of course and then everything worked perfectly. So now we can see that power comes in from the solar panels to the charge controller to the battery bank and the battery bank can power the inverter and the inverter can go to the load center and then out to a circuit. So we have AC power, next step, DC power. So Ruth is chiseling out a little trench here in the Fox block where we will put conduit and then the conduit just provides a path to easily pull wire in the future if necessary but even now it's where the wire will run from whatever main or wherever junction box to the outlet uh, and the final destination so anywhere we have wires in fox block we have to chisel this out to put the conduit in stay safe Oh, we got Danielle in here doing her favorite job, mudding and taping. Not. Mudding and taping. That I looks never good. liked painting, but I definitely don't like mudding. lights and the outlets for the kids rooms and they're gonna love it when we're looking for uh, lights you don't have the options that the big box stores have so you can't go in and just walk into this array of lights for AC because DC is pretty limited but a lot of the lighting systems that I go to are RV interior lights. And these are great because they're small, they're compact, they're all 12, 24 volt DC. This can attach directly to the drywall. Now I've got it temporarily tacked up to this beam here uh, and I'll pull that down when I put the drywall up and I can actually just Velcro that to the ceiling, which is really nice. But these actually, these little guys actually put out about 900 lumens, which is equivalent to a 60 watt light bulb. So they're pretty effective. Now, as far as switches, when I go to the RV sites, the switches are unbelievably expensive. So I just go back to the standard AC outlet switch and it works the same way. It just connects a circuit. And these are about a buck 25. Whereas if I bought a switch for this, it would be about $8. So people wonder why we're basing this house on direct current power. Well, it's just efficiency. DC pumps are more efficient, DC motors are more efficient, lighting is more efficient, and we want to keep our footprint down as small as possible. But we also realize that almost everything today is built on alternating current power. And this is a plug that goes into the wall, and you see these all over the house. This is a 15 amp plug right here. And so every single, set, not every single room, but every section of the house is going to have regular outlets 
alternating current outlets. And you have to excuse that when it's just hanging there because we haven't cut the drywall yet. But I want to take you over and show you a direct current outlet. Well, one of the great things about AC power is that there are standards for the outlets. Unfortunately, with DC power, that's not the case. I mean, think of your cell phone um, and anything you plug in that's battery powered. You have to find the right connector for the right phone or the AC wall outlets that go to DC. There's a million types of plugs for that. Well, DC really hasn't met a standard yet or determined a standard, but the industry right now is going toward the USB, okay? And most specifically, the USB-C seems to be the, the standard for high data transfer and high power. Now, if later that changes, I can certainly change these out. But right now what I'm doing is I'm going with a double USB. There's a top and a bottom. In the middle, there's a type C. And there's actually a power switch here on and off. So I can actually turn the outlet off at night. And so I'm hoping that the industry sticks with this standard because we're gonna put these all over the house. And again, if they change, I have to change them out but we'll see what happens. What you doing over here? Well, we're in crunch time. The kids are coming home tomorrow. There's no way we're gonna get everything finished, but I saw a really neat display for archery equipment. So I'm trying to quickly build it for Nathan's room. It's like an A. Well, it's not finished yet, but yeah, you'll see the finished product right. when it's done. Looking forward to it. It's 10 p.m. and I'm trying to get to bed, but Danielle is putting a shower in. And mind you, it's a shower with no pipes, no plumbing, but it's got pretty glass doors. So I think we can stand in there and pretend like there's water. The work never stops here. I almost have a shower, I can pretend. Yeah, and Rose is assisting. from the kids coming home. I'm so excited. I can't wait for them to see what we've done this week. Um, I did not get nearly as far along as I'd hoped we would, but uh, we did get a little bit done in each child's room so that they could at least have an idea of what the room will look like. And they have their own kind of private space now, which was really the most critical. So I wanna give you a little glimpse of what I've done so far. Um, each of our children I've been talking with to see what they wanted in their bedroom. You know, they're at that age where they have their own desires. And I love to decorate. My mom went to school for interior design. I gleaned a few little tips for decorating from her. So um, I'm having a lot of fun with these. I kind of took their theme and then I'm running with it. So let's take a look. We'll start in Nathan's room. Who now has a light. So Nathan's choice for theme, he wanted hunting and his sports. So I have started the wood wall in his room. Obviously it is far from finished, but his entire room is going to be wood. Um, and then this will be his sports wall. I'll finish out the wood around here if Sean pans around a little bit. So this, all this fox block will be wood. This wall is gonna be half wood and he's got a big um, sports related mural. He, I'm sorry, sporting, uh, like hunting, fishing and such, a mural that he wants over his bed. Uh, we're still waiting on his deer head that he had mounted from the first buck he ever got last year. So hopefully that'll be in soon. And then I'm trying to set up areas to hang and essentially store all his hunting equipment so it keeps it out of the way and kind of uses it as decoration, but it's still easy for him to grab and go outside and use it. So I'm pretty excited about this room. I think it'll be a lot of fun, a little bit of a rustic country cabin look. Um, so the, the finish, <laughs> and Rosa approves of the rug down here. Don't you do fall. All right, let's take a look at Aiden's room. So 
obviously we'll get doors eventually. We're just not there yet. I'm going to use curtains temporarily for privacy. So Aiden's theme, he loves rocks and kind of the geology theme. So I'm going with more of a outdoorsy nature and science type deal. So we actually did tin to protect the bottom of his walls. He likes to rough house quite a bit, so I thought that was a good option. Um, it's also easier to clean. And then his upper wall will involve a lot of displays of his rock collections and such. In fact, he's got quite the stuff going on in here already. So we'll be moving a lot of these um, rocks and, and different things that he's collected over time. They'll be displayed up on his wall, geodes and such. And I'm really excited to mount, he has a full wall mural that kind of looks like his bed is tucked into a massive rock. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to mount that, but it just arrived today, so I'm not gonna get it hung in time. Um, I've still got to finish mudding in here, but it's happening, it's coming slowly but surely. Finally, um, Michaela's room. We're gonna walk through. We have three girls, they're all sharing one bedroom, but Michaela being the oldest obviously wants her private space. So I haven't really done anything in Ruth and Kyla's room yet because their supplies are in boxes in the Connex. They're not really getting a whole lot of new stuff. Um, so we'll work on that a little bit later, but is this on? No, that circuit's not on, it's gonna be a little dark. But Michaela has, we basically used a curtain as a dividing wall. This will be a permanent thing until Michaela leaves home and we open this up into a bigger room. I'll open this curtain for light. But Michaela loves the, the kind of turquoise color. So she actually picked out her bedspread and she's going to have more of a horse and sports theme. Um, she's just very athletic, very outdoorsy and loves the horses. So we've got quite a bit that we're gonna be decorating the walls with later. Um, she got her black shag rug. She's been wanting one of those. I guess they're coming back in style. And she's actually working on building her own bed. So I'm really proud of her. She's not finished yet, but um, she's building this bed out of hickory. And we've still gotta add the trim and a couple of shelves. Uh, but she's been learning all about how to use wood glue and pegs and clamps and working really hard on that. So the bed is the only thing she's seen. The rest of this will be new, the curtains and such. So again, I'm excited. She also has the closet now drywalled in. We just haven't finished the mudding yet. So once again, it's um, coming along. So we'll see what their reactions are when they get home. All right, kids are home from camp. And it's time for the reveal for what it's worth. So we have privacy anyway. Oh my goodness. Oh, we have a sleeping baby. Oh, she should be awake. What way is it like? Is that light? Go on in and open your curtain. The other one. Oh, my curtain and my rug. Holy cow, this is like totally set up. Wow, Rosa. Rosa approves of the shack. Oh, my baskets. Well, I put those in there for now. Just to organize till we get your shelves. Wow, you guys are a lot of work. So you have total privacy, all sheetrock and everything. Did you put more boards up? A few. And does that light work? It works once he gets the fuse box in. So that's one of the ones that have an issue. I do like these curtains. They're an almost match. Yeah. I think they're close enough. That's a little bit. All right, so your proof? Like yeah. It's bigger than we thought it would be. Hi, baby. Oh, somebody Hi, just woke up. All right, I'll leave you guys to it. The boys are eager. Like I said, it's not a ton done, but it's enough that you have an idea of what's coming. Wait, wait, wait. What? I'm gonna go in first. Okay, okay, you can come in. Light switch. That's cool. <laughs> Did it on this work? Yep. That's cool. So your mural actually came in today, but I have to finish the mudding before I can put it on. That's cool. You like the metal on the base? Yeah. We've got to put Trent a baseboard and a top board, and oh. that'll mold that in, and then you'll get the mural off. Of Is that kind of what you were picturing with the metal? Well, that's gonna hang on your wall, but I couldn't do any of your wall decorations because I still have so much mudding and painting to do. 
So I wanted to you see like what else you have. Yeah. Yeah. So. Rosa loves it. Nice. <laughs> Rosa approves of this one too. <laughs> All right, let's go get Nathan. Your own private space. How about that? So the idea is all your hunting and stuff can be, has a place assigned to it now, but when you want to use it, you take it outside, you use it, and then you bring it back in and hang it out. And then this will be your sports wall here. And uh, once again, Rosa approves of the rug. I think Rosa is loving these rugs. <laughs> Here's the Why did I order it for you? I thought it looked kind of like a, I don't know, some kind of skin. Oh, that light's so flat. Yes, it's a DC light. Oh. So they're tiny, but they're bright. So you've got the hunting room. Like that? Wait till you see what else I have in store. This is all I could manage this week. <coughs> all right. Rosa, you gonna stay on the rug? All right, you have fun. <laughs> I think they like them. They approve, Dad. Well, thanks again for watching. We love the subscribers that join us every week, and uh, we like to read those comments too. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. But I want to finish the week out with this. When you get power, one of the greatest things is the refrigerator goes from that tiny little RV fridge to a nice, big, normal size. And by the way, that's DC power. See you next week.